Once again, we are taken to a familiar location, one that was first introduced in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, the Raccoon General Hospital. Only here, it is known as the Hive. This is the third scenario in the first Outbreak game, and it even includes a short pathway through the sewers. There are plenty of details to explore here, but to get a clearer picture of it all, let's dive into the game and go step by step as to what is needed to achieve in order to complete the scenario. When the scenario begins, you'll be in room 301 of the Raccoon Hospital. Walk forward to trigger an in-game cutscene where the only doctor left, who's known as Dr. Hirsch, will enter the room. Follow him into the hallway and head south to enter room 302. Here you'll find a stick in the drawer, a crutch, a male nurse's diary, and a handgun in the locker. Once you pick up the handgun, it will trigger the appearance of the Leech Man. The Leech Man is a horrific creature that follows you everywhere using the air ducts of the hospital's ventilation system. If it uses its extended arm attack, it can leave your character bleeding, which not only slows you down, but you'll also leave a trail of blood, making the Leech Man follow you a lot faster than usual. After it appears, quickly dodge or tackle it to temporarily stun the Leech Man and exit the room. Head into the nurse center in front of the elevator, where you'll find the hospital interior sketch the repair work memo, and moving towards the barricade will trigger another in-game cutscene of Dr. Hirsch restoring power to the hospital elevator. Oh, the bloody elevator isn't working. I'm trying to figure out why. It seems the electricity on this floor is entirely supplied by an auxiliary battery. See if this works. After the cutscene, climb over the barricade and take the two blood infusion packs from the blood temperature regulation device. Then exit the room and take the elevator to the second floor. If you're playing this scenario for the first time and would like to solve the puzzle which gives you access to the B2 floor needed to complete the scenario, then take the first floor and find part of a memo that contains a modifier for the Carmine code. Those specific numbers must be added to the Carmine code to determine the security passcode to access the B2 floor. And just so you know, the Carmine code is 1210. Just add those numbers with the four numbers written in the part of the memo file, and that's it. However, if you want to complete the scenario as fast as possible, enter the second floor instead. Then make your way across the hallway and go downstairs, and into the room at the far end. Now enter the room that's right next to you. The examination room will have a few enemy traps waiting for your arrival. The card key level 1 is on the desk against the north wall. The hospital staff member next to it will rise up and attack you 15 seconds after you've entered the examination room, so you're gonna have to move quickly to avoid getting attacked. Once you pick up the card key, backtrack all the way to the elevator in the second floor. There are many rooms along the way which aren't necessary to explore, but if you've taken too much damage along the way, or you're running out of handgun rounds, then it's up to you to decide on whether you want to continue with the main objectives, or explore a few new areas in hopes of finding helpful resources. After you reach the elevator, take it to the B1 floor where you'll be using the level 1 card key in the room at the far end of the passway. A zombie next to the door will break through it and attack you. But the best strategy is to use the card key the moment the zombie reaches out to attack you. You won't be hit due to the invincibility animation from sliding the card key. You can also try this and uh, take advantage of this strategy with every other animation such as picking up an item before an enemy attack, but it does require the right timing to pull off so try and practice it whenever you can. The next area has two zombies along the way. 
I recommend you take the first one down. The second zombie further up ahead won't necessarily be in your way, so you can ignore that one now and when you backtrack through this area. Get to the door up ahead where you'll enter the waste liquid disposal room. Here you'll find a green herb to your left with a leech close by, and a stairway in front of you. Descend down the stairs and either shoot or move around the leech or leeches depending on the difficulty you chose. Wade through the water and climb up the short platform where the zombie lies on the floor. The chain key aka padlock key will be here as well. So pick it up at a far enough distance from the grasp of that zombie because he will wake up and try to grab you. I believe this is the only crawling zombie you'll ever find throughout the game. I don't know why this is the only one with an animation crawl. It would have been useful for many areas to catch you off guard, since it only happens here though you won't expect it for the first time, but the surprise is over after the first experience. Whereas it could have worked out better if you ran across multiple crawling zombies in different scenarios and difficulties. Now once you grab the padlock key, backtrack all the way to the elevator area, but enter the room in the middle of the pathway. Move to the control panel in the EV control room and either drop a blood pack or shoot the leeches covering the panel to input the codes to access the rooftop and B2 floor. The rooftop is not necessarily required to explore unless you're playing as Cindy or Kevin or any of the NPCs with their character type. So you can always ignore access to the rooftop. But before inputting the codes to the B2 floor, I recommend you do drop a blood pack to not only remove the leeches in the control panel, but for the leech man as well since he'll most likely drop down seconds after you've entered this room. These are the codes for the B2 floor, so enter the correct one and exit the room and make your way to the B2 floor by using the elevator up ahead. Enter the room to your right, and if you don't have any more blood packs, make sure to pick one up in this room. Depending on the difficulty, you'll either find one, two, or none. It's not 100% necessary, but it does help make things a lot easier for this next step. Enter the fixed temperature experiment room, and drop the blood pack in the temperature controlled chamber to lure in the leech man in there. And once you do so, use a control console to change the temperature to high, which will finally put an end to this pursuing enemy. Once the cutscene is over, use a control console to change the temperature to low so you can re-enter the temperature chamber and pick up the level 2 card key that the leech man was carrying. Analyzing the body, you'll discover the identity of the leech man which turns out to be Dr. Hirsch. This is a surprise, mainly because Dr. Hirsch was attacked by the leech man. So is it possible that there could still be another leech man on the loose? Well, it is also possible that the leech is controlling its original host would then switch bodies with its next victim to have more blood to feed on. However, depending on the status of your partners, you could end up seeing another leechman pursuing you once again. And only this time, you won't be able to use a temperature chamber to get rid of it. But by now, you only have one final objective remaining. Exit the room and make your way down the B2F pathway, where you'll use the card key on the door panel at the far end giving you access to the underpass entrance, where you'll find a boat chained to the post at the south end of the room. The boat is your way out of the hospital. Here you'll use the chain keys to unlock the padlock. But before you do so, there should be a first aid spray, a green herb, and handgun rounds in this room, depending on the difficulty you chose. So pick up whatever is needed, because even though this is the way out, you have one final problem ahead of you. This is the final boss of the scenario. You must avoid being rammed by this giant leech queen as it deals a great amount of damage on any of the survivors when compared to its other attacks. The creature can tackle you, 
spit poison, dealing the least amount of damage, but also has a 20% chance of poisoning a character, and it can use a tentacle attack for a long range attack. The best strategy to deal the most damage is by using the environmental objects such as the three ceiling valves spaced along the tunnel. Shooting them once the giant leeches below them will douse it with hot water, causing it a great amount of damage. There's also a dark tank in the middle of the tunnel which will explode if you shoot it once. So you can use this too to cause even more damage than the giant leech. And in case you couldn't land those traps accurately, there's a gas can at the far end of the tunnel where the boat was docked. Lure the creature all the way to this spot and shoot the gas can which will completely eradicate the leech queen once and for all. This boss fight is a difficult one since you can't just immediately run to the far end of the tunnel to easily kill it because it won't chase after you if you're out of range. So you'll have to get close enough to get its attention and sometimes this can lead to getting hit by its acid spray, its tentacles, or its tackle. If you're out of ammo and don't have any melee weapons either, you can try tackling the creature as well which surprisingly deals four times the normal damage. So do whatever must be done to gain the victory and complete the scenario. And if you can, hold on to at least one single bullet because this could determine whether you survive the battle or make it this far just to result in a game over and start all the way from the very beginning once again. There are many areas you can explore which aren't required to go through since you only need to enter a few specific areas to pick up key cards and the padlock key. But these unnecessary areas are worth exploring since this is the same hospital that Carlos went through to get a hold of a vaccine for Jill in Resident Evil 3. In room 202, you can see many leeches slithering outside the windows, and examining the lit cabinet will cause leeches to leap through the glass and harm your character enough to leave him or her bleeding. You can also find extra blood packs in here, and an extra handgun and ammo for one of your partners. There are a couple areas that are inaccessible unless you open the shutters. To do this, enter the night reception room, use the controls in the front counter to power the switches for the two shutters on the first floor and in the back of the room, you'll find a helpless victim, and even the burst handgun. Also near the entrance, Mark can find a security guard manual, which only he can locate since it counts as an event checklist. The fact that the leechman can become any of your fallen partners adds to additional pursuing enemies, only in this case, extra sub-bosses. So be careful not to let any of your partners die, as they will make things much more difficult especially if you're playing on the harder difficulties because you'll end up encountering two leechmen in the same area at once. Also in the harder difficulties, if you kill a leech, another will drop from the ceiling, so it's best to ignore them and move on with your objectives. If you run out of ammo or melee weapons at the final boss, and it's just too damn risky to tackle the Leech Queen to death, well, there's still one final strategy that will actually work if you have the patience. Try luring the creature to the far end of the tunnel, but since you can't shoot the gas can if you run out of ammo, then your only option is to stomp on the creature. Yes, it is possible to pull this off, but it takes a lot of patience because there is no way to tell whether you're inflicting damage or you're just stomping on the floor. I spent about 10 minutes tops just stomping away, hoping that I was landing some damage, and after a lot of patience, it surprisingly worked. At the beginning of the scenario, there's a nurse call button which you can press, but nothing happens. However, if you're playing this on the online multiplayer mode, you can have a partner press the button when you're in the nurse center, and you'll hear a buzz sound which is quite neat to be honest. You'll even get extra points just for pressing the button, so make sure to do that at the start of every playthrough. Also in the nurse center, there's a map which everyone can obtain except for George because he's already well familiar with this hospital. For this scenario, it's best to play as either George, Cindy, or Kevin. If you're playing as George, he can create hemostat pills which are very useful in the harder difficulties since enemies like zombies and leechmen will usually leave you bleeding after one hit, which can slow you down a lot. The treatment room is full of useful items for George. Not only is there a typewriter, a hemostat pill, and special items for specific characters and sets, 
but you can also find four recovery medicine bases in the cabinets on the southeast wall. George can pick these up and mix the items with the medical set to create recovery medicines for himself or his teammates. If you're playing as Cindy or Kevin, talk to the injured officer in the rooftop, and he'll give you a submachine gun. The best thing I like about this weapon is that it takes handgun ammo. So if you're playing as either Cindy or Kevin, be sure to save up as much handgun ammo for the submachine gun. But just so you know, in the harder difficulties, the injured officer will instead give you a burst handgun, which I'd say is good for Cindy, but if you're playing as Kevin, his 45 handgun is powerful enough to take down the Leech Queen with about 3-4 to four shots, maybe less if he focuses on his target. There is a locker room which is full of useful items such as a scrub brush, a red herb, handgun rounds, special items, and a handgun magazine which can only be accessed by Alyssa if she uses her lockpicking skills on it. There's also a zombie nurse in one of the lockers so be sure to take her down immediately. In the examination room, depending on the set and difficulty, you can find two unique special items, Chris Redfield's medical chart and his x-ray picture. Analyzing the chart describes that it has a STARS medical checkup stamp on it. These are just two of many interesting special items found in this scenario. There's also a black umbrella by the entrance to the hospital with the Umbrella Company logo on it, and even a red and blue leech figurine, which might be a reference to the leech hunter mode from Resident Evil Zero. There's also this broken wall in the fixed temperature experiment room that's not explained as to what caused this wreckage. In a way, it might be a good thing that it's not explained because it sort of leaves you with your own conclusions and theories as to what did this. And if it's possible that there was an explanation but ended up being scrapped due to limitations. In the area where you find the padlock keys, you might randomly find a dying civilian. He asks for a hemostat pill to stop his bleeding, but he ends up dying whether you try helping him or not. And as mentioned before, during the boss fight, there are three ceiling valves that you can shoot to inflict 300 points of damage for each one you shoot. There's the gas can at the starting point of the area, and even the side tank in the middle of the sewage pathway, which will inflict 2,000 points of damage. The gas can at the beginning of the area will inflict over 9,000 points of damage, so it's guaranteed to kill the creature in case you manage to have it follow you all the way through. I'm surprised that there aren't any hunters in this scenario considering the fact that you encounter them as Carlos in Resident Evil 3, but then again, they are the hunter betas, and with the introduction they get, it appears as if they too had just arrived at that particular location. I did like that they included a Cerberus that breaks through a window, and this does make it its first introduction to the Outbreak games, but I hate that you only encounter one. The Cerberus are easy to take down since you only have to hit it once to stun it and then quickly hit it multiple times while it's down to simply finish it off. The only thing to prevent that from happening is if the Leechman shows up to interfere, but I really would have liked it if we had seen more of them roaming throughout the first floor of the hospital. Now when it comes to comparing this scenario of the hospital with its portrayal in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, they actually did something I didn't realize until making this video. In the hospital presented in RE3 Nemesis, you only go through the first floor, the fourth floor, and the B3 floor. And in the Outbreak version, you go through the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, the B1 floor, B2 floor, and the rooftop. So the only familiar areas of the game are in the first floor, but isn't it splendid that in the Outbreak version, you practically enter the floors you couldn't access in Resident Evil 3? And in that game, you enter the floors you couldn't access in Outbreak. Leaves you wondering if the Outbreak characters did end up going through all floors, would they encounter the Hunter Gammas earlier than expected? I guess it wouldn't really matter seeing as they do encounter them in the fifth scenario of the game. One big question on my mind is, why did they call this scenario The Hive? The only conclusion I have is that the developers named it this way because they wanted to reference The Hive which was the Umbrella Lab from the 2002 Resident Evil film. I think they should have called this scenario something else like Slithering or Bloody Substance or just Raccoon General Hospital. But aside from that confusion, this scenario was outright challenging. It took me at least 14 playthroughs to get well acquainted with it, and with the leech men on your tail you don't get much time to browse and search for extra items. If you play this on the harder difficulties, chances are you won't make it out to the very end, at least for your partners. 
It's best to play as either Cindy or Kevin for the submachine gun at the rooftop, but I've had many times where the zombies and crows on the rooftop managed to get the best of me and not only prevent me from getting that submachine gun, but prevent me from completing the scenario. It reminds me of why I love playing the classic RE games with tank controls and fixed camera angles. You can't simply walk into a room and roundhouse kick a zombie or a group of zombies or stun them with one or two shots to maneuver around them. You are always on the edge of your feet here. You can plan ahead of time how you'll maneuver around every enemy, but one small hiccup can completely change your situation. Again, especially in the harder difficulty seeing as zombies can take more hits, they'll likely leave you bleeding if they bite you once, and they'll even move fast enough to catch up to you if you're playing as a slow character. When your character is left bleeding, you need a hemostat pill immediately because your character will move incredibly slow. It's best to play as George or any George type NPCs to create plenty of hemostat pills just in case. Here's a funny story I unfortunately didn't get to capture footage of. At the end of a run, the moment I reached the boat, I had to ditch Jim because somewhere down the line he got lost and I hadn't seen him for a long time. And my second partner Cindy died and turned into a leech woman. So I faced off against the Leech Queen alone. The fight was a difficult one. I struggled to lay as many hits on the boss without getting hit, so I was sure that I wouldn't survive the fight since I was low on ammo. I had about a few shots remaining, but with no chance to get some distance to reload. And I was in critical condition without any healing items remaining. But just when all hope was lost, out of nowhere, Jim shows up with some crutches and smacks the Leech Queen twice, and then books it! And that gave me enough time to reload and shoot the ceiling valve from above, killing the creature and just barely handing me the victory. I'd say this is one of those times when the AI partner redeemed themselves. And not just any partner, Jim Chapman. So that's everything you need to know about the Hive scenario from the first Outbreak game. It's one that leaves me unsure of the outcome when facing off against the final boss. Even after all the times replaying this scenario, you never know when you'll have enough ammo or healing items by the end, which could be what determined the outcome of the fight for survival. If it wasn't for the steam valves above, or the explosive gas tank, or the gas can from the opposite end of the exit, this leech queen would most likely be unstoppable, at least for me. I've seen others manage to take it down without the use of a weapon. Using George to tackle it until it drops dead is one way to get the extra points for the no weapons run. And if you can pull this off with even more precise timing, you can get the no damage points, which to me seems nearly impossible. But speedrunners have managed to surprise me, and I look forward to seeing who else can pull this off with every character. Next time, we'll examine the next scenario in the game, known as Hellfire. Terror is our constant companion. It lurks in the shadows, ready to strike at any moment. Today, it chose me. Yet, somehow, I kept it together in that suffocating hospital. I suppose I should be thankful for that. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to give this video a chance to grow. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for their impeccable generosity. Your support means a lot to me and you are part of the reason why I try to make the best content that I can. And if you like this content, check out the rest of my channel. You'll find more entertainment from separate franchises I like to cover such as Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, Celebrity Deathmatch, Men in Black, The Mask, Batman Comics, The Terminator, TMNT, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, and more. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out my exclusive videos such as the Gantz content. And if you'd like to show your support, go to my Patreon and support the channel, which is only a dollar. Sacrifice that McChicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.